as you can see, we are running a purpose server in our computer. And this is our server. Look, if I type something on the console, like let's say kick and I type it's Cuba, it will kick me out. And as you can see, I've been kicked by an operator. So if you want to learn how to run a purpose server for Minecraft 1.19.4, make sure you watch this video until the end and let's get started with the guide. Okay, so the first step to creating a purpose server is clicking the second link in the description, which will bring you to our written guide on how to actually make a purpose server. Now, if you pay attention to this guide, you will see within the requirements tab that you will need Java 17. It is very important that you have Java 17 because I get a lot of comments multiple times when I'm making this type of videos about people saying that their Java is not working, that they're getting a certain Java error, or maybe their jar files are not opening, which you will learn what a jar file is in this tutorial. So I went ahead and added Java 17 in the requirements. If you click in there, you will be taken to our Java 17 download and install guide. It is an in-depth guide on how to download and install Java 17. Of course, you will learn how to do that in here. And once you have Java 17, then come back to this part and follow along the guide. Now, obviously this is a very in-depth guide. You have everything in here from downloading the purpose server file to actually even joining your own server, everything. This is a very in-depth guide, but I'm assuming most of you just wanna follow along the video. So let's go ahead and do that. Once you're here in the guide, go ahead and scroll down until you see this little download button right here. It's right next to the first step, right? So go ahead and click in there and that is going to redirect you to the official purple website. Now, if you have any questions, I recommend that you use their website either for frequently asked questions or for more in-depth questions regarding Purper. But if you just want to make the server, then let's go ahead and do that. Once you're over here, click where it says see all builds. That is going to show you all the recent builds as well as the Minecraft versions that you have Purper for. In this case, we're going to download 1.19.4 because that is the most recent Minecraft out there. In the future, you might be watching this. There might be a 1.20. And if you want to use that one for the newer Minecraft, go ahead and use it. But in this case, we're we're gonna download the most recent build for the most recent version, right? So we're gonna click this little cloud thingy right here and that is going to immediately start the download for purple. We're gonna click save down here. That is gonna give us our file. If you don't have the option that I had, then you probably won't have to click save. The file will download automatically and you'll find it here on this little arrow if you're using Chrome. If you're using any other browser, you could probably find the file in your downloads folder. Once you have located the file, go ahead and drag and drop it into your desktop. Now we're going to minimize the browser and we're going to create a new folder. We're going to name this folder. Let's name it purple. And I really hope that's how you pronounce it. Purple 1.19.4. We're going to open this folder and we're going to drag and drop our file that we just downloaded, right? So the purple installer, let's call it. Let's go ahead and drop that file in there. I'm going to make this folder a little bit bigger. Now, before we keep going with this guy, I do feel in the obligation to let you know about today's sponsor, Apex Hosting. Now, I know that we are making a purple server. However, later on, if you want your friends to join, you'll need to share your IP address. And sharing your IP address is a risky thing that you only want to share with some friends. So if you're looking for a server to play with anybody, with multiple people, it doesn't matter how many people you want, you could use Apex Hosting. Apex Hosting will create a server for you, either Java or Bedrock. It could be purple. It could be paper. It could be any type of server that you want with mods or non-modded, vanilla, whatever you want. Apex Hosting will do it for you. And besides all the advantages that they provide you with, something that I personally love about Apex Hosting is that you could actually access the server console through your phone. So you could actually be far away from home and you could access the server and do whatever you want. OP anybody, kick somebody from the server, change the settings, anything that you want. And also, if you use the first link in the description, you'll get 25% off your first server. So I had to let you know about that since we are making a server in today's video. Now let's get back to the tutorial. What you're going to do next is create a new text document. For that, just right click, click new and click text document. Go ahead and open that text document app and then go back to the website and I scroll down until you see this little line in here. Or you could also copy it from the description of this video. I'm going to go ahead and leave it in the description so you guys could copy from there as well. So just go ahead and drag your mouse across and copy until the I at the end. Press Ctrl C and go back to the text document and paste it in there. Make sure it ends in an I, as you can see, and there's no dot. If there's a dot in there, go ahead and delete it, right? Now, this little string of text is very important that you change it. And what you're going to change is a part that says paper right so what we're going to do is copy the name of the file we just downloaded in order to do that if you're using windows just go ahead and click on the name once so just one click and that is going to highlight everything in there and you're going to press ctrl c again you're going to go back to your text document you're going to select the paper word and you're going to replace just the paper part with the name of the document as you can see like that that's the name of my document if you look down here it matches perfectly and it also has the dot jar at the end okay now if you don't manage to copy from there just type it yourself as long as it matches perfectly you should be fine and what you're going to do is click save right but before you click save i want you to know that these two g's 
that means the amount of RAM that we're allowing the server to have. Now, the amount of RAM that you allow your server to have will vary depending on how much RAM you have available on your computer. Now, I have 32 gigabytes of RAM, so if I give two gigs to the server, it will be plenty of gigabytes and I will have a lot of other gigabytes left. As a matter of fact, me having 32 gigabytes probably allows me to even give it eight or even 16 if I need to. Some of you might have 16 gigabytes and you might be able to give it four gigabytes or maybe eight, right? So that will vary depending on your computer. In this case, and for the purpose of this guy, I'm going to leave it at two gigabytes. If you need to increase or lower that number, feel free to do so depending on what your computer will allow you to do. So once you have the text fixed, go ahead and click file and save and go ahead and close that text document. What we're going to do next is rename this text document. You could right click it and click rename. And then we're going to type start and we're going to change the text part, right? The TXT, we're going to change it to BAT. So it's going to be start that bad file. That's what we're going to name it, okay? Now, go ahead and click yes if it asks you that you are going to change it. Now, some of you might not see the file extension, so like you might not be able to type the bad part. In order to change that, just click on view in here and make sure that you have file name extensions selected. As you can see, if you don't have file name extensions selected, you won't be able to see the BAT part or the text part to change it to BAT. Anyways, once we have this change, you're not going to launch it, okay? I know that many of you wanna launch it, not yet. What we're going to do is click on the little address area for the folder. So go ahead and click next to purple, just in the empty space. And that is going to select the whole location of your file. And what you're going to do is type CMD. So that's all you gotta do. Just type CMD in this little address bar and then press enter. And so what you're going to do once you have the command prompt open is just type start.bat, which is the file. Oops, I actually messed that up. Start.bat. So we're gonna press enter after we type start.bat next to purple 1.19.4, etc. Just go ahead and press enter. And that is going to start downloading some stuff in the background as you can see. Now, it's very important that you make sure, like let's say that you try to run the start.bat file and it didn't let you, like it said something like unable to access, just make sure that your file, your jar file, doesn't have any spaces in the name and that it matches the text document that we typed earlier, okay? So make sure that it matches and that there's no spaces in the name. That is very important. So as you can see, after you run the start.bat file, you'll get this little arrow, fail to load from file and also fail to load ULA. That just means that we need to accept the ULA, which is super simple. Just minimize this, okay? Just click on minimize and then go ahead and open the ULA text. Just go ahead and open this little text document that appears, ULA, and in here, just change the false part to true. So all you have to do is type true, just like that, ULA equal true. Make sure there's no spaces after, click file, click save, close that. Go back to the command that you shouldn't have closed, the command prompt, type start.bat again, and then press enter one more time. And now the server will start running and hopefully you will make it until the end. Like I said, if you have Java 17, you shouldn't have any issues while doing all of this. So just give it a second. As you can see, there's more files extracting in the background. And as you can see, it already says preparing world. And then it says done. So now we have the server running. We have the server up and running. So how do you join now that we have the server? How do you join your own server, right? I am assuming you want to test out if your server is working. So that is very simple. First, you want to stop the server. So go ahead and press stop, S-T-O-P on the command console. Go ahead and press that and press enter. And that is going to stop your server, okay? So as you can see, the server is closing. The server has now been closed. Now you don't have to close the command prompt for the next part. What you're going to do is type ipconfig. So just go ahead and type ipconfig on the next available line just like that, ipconfig, right? As you can see, ipconfig, and then press enter after it, and that is going to give you some information about your computer. As you can see, I went ahead and covered most of it so you guys don't get confused. You are only looking for a line called ipv4 address, right? So you should see some numbers at the end of that line. And what you're going to do is select all those numbers, right? Just like this, like you're seeing in here, press Control C to copy it. And now we're gonna close the command prompt on the top. So on the right, just click close. And now we're gonna launch the server again by double clicking on the start BAT file. Okay, so go ahead and click on that. And that is going to start running your server already. And while the server is running, we could actually minimize everything and launch Minecraft. Now, as you can see, I'm opening Minecraft on the right. And if you look here, it's Minecraft 1.19.4. And it is very important that you launch the matching version of Minecraft. Of course, this is vanilla Minecraft because we're making a vanilla server so far. You could later on add plugins. And that's something great about Purple that you could actually uh, customize a lot of things. But however, how do you join your server? Let's go ahead and head into that. What you're going to do is click on multiplayer once Minecraft has opened. Go ahead and click either to direct connection to just join it directly or add a server if you want to have it in here like this, right? As you can see, I have multiple servers in here. If you want to have it in there, just click add a server. If you just want to join it real quick, click direct connection. In this step, we're going to actually add the server. So once you click add the server, 
go ahead and head to server address and either type the IPv4 that we copied earlier or just press Ctrl V and paste it in there. You can name this whatever you want. We're actually gonna name it subscribe. So you guys remember to subscribe and then click done. You should see your server loading in here. As you can see, subscribe is right here. And we're gonna go ahead and click play on it. And let's just wait uh, for it to join so you guys could see that this is me, this is me in the server. As you can see on the left, as soon as I joined the server, it actually showed on the server console. And yeah, this is the server console. So let's say that you wanna actually like OP yourself, right? Let's say that you wanted to make me, which is it's Cuba, an operator of the server. So go ahead and head over to the console, type OP it's Cuba, which is my name. And if you wanna OP yourself, type your name and then press enter. Go back to the game and as you can see in the bottom i have been made a server operator so i could now insert commands like i could put something like i don't know a kick right if i want to kick someone i could let's see if i could kick myself let's see yeah i, I kicked myself uh, i've been i've been kicked by myself but yeah that is pretty much how to create a pair per server if you want your friends to join you now need to pour forward the server in order to pour forward the server we have made a video for that because that is also a different topic and we don't want to confuse you so go ahead and watch that video next which will be coming up on the screen right now go ahead and watch that video and you'll learn how to pour forward a server that's that's all you need right now if you want your friends to join so what are you waiting for